okay? <laughs> <laughs> Is it seven yet? I, actually, it just turned seven. So do you want to, are you starting, Paul? Um, yeah, one second. Hello, all. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hi. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's, yeah, let's start with a prayer. All right. Thanks, Paul. Okay. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, blessed Jesus, give me stillness of soul in thee. Let thy mighty calmness reign in me. Rule me, O thou King of gentleness, King of peace. Amen. In the name of the Amen. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So welcome, everybody. Uh, tonight, we just want to talk a little bit with you about marriage and fear. And because I fear is... Oh, sorry, I'm interrupting. I know. But I just kind of, I just kind of want to hear how everybody's doing. Or do you want okay. to do your intro first? No, no, go ahead. I just kind of want to hear how you guys are doing because it's because we like you guys. <laughs> and, and just before we launch in, it would just be kind of nice to hear. Um, yeah, I mean, welcome, because I just feel like, yeah, we're kind of a small, but a, a nice group. And, and we appreciate you guys. And I want to hear more from you. So um, on my screen, I have first Kenneth, and then I have Natasha, and then I have Susan and Paul, and then I have David and Mary, and then I have Maureen. And I think I'm not sure if there's, anyways, so let's, let's just start with you, Kenneth, and just a couple words, it can be, or you can just say hi, but if you have anything to say, go for it. Take but a minute. you don't have to either. No, you don't have to. But, uh, we're doing good, we're doing good. Uh, work has started again, so it, again, it's a whole new routine. Uh, I'm a bit tired this week because of uh, the past few days of, uh, of full working days, yeah, so, but uh, it's good to be here. That's yeah. good. And so are you in your office? Are you, are you in your office? I'm in my office. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And are things like in Kuala Lumpur is are are people moving about in the streets? Like are is there still like are people seeming to be really afraid? Is there still a mask mandate? What's it like there? Um, people are getting a bit complacent because yeah. the government has relaxed uh, relaxed the SOPs and uh, all the restrictions. What's so SOP? I, I, I mean, uh, standard operating procedures to keep oh, people okay. safe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so they relax. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think people are getting a bit too complacent. So there are too many people out on the streets right now. It's a bit scary. Okay, <laughs> okay. It's life getting and, back to normal again. Okay, well, okay. that's good. That's good. And how about, how, for, how about for you, Tasha? How's it feeling for you this week? Uh, this week? Well, um, I would say it's beginning to get uh, busy because uh, we're starting, I'm starting to work soon. This okay. Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, so we have to do a lot of uh, preparation before uh, everybody comes back. Because I'm, I'm, uh, we open and we are actually an art school, so there's a lot of things to do, like uh, sterilizing the. Yeah, uh, and uh, making sure all the teachers are vaccinated, making sure everything like, you know, all the administration stuff. So oh, okay. quite a lot. Um, my phone has been like, this morning I just woke up and I've got like 10. Oh, okay, so you're at, you're at school now? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm still at home, but okay. um, yeah, to start here. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, there are some areas um, which are very, as Kenneth mentioned, there are areas which are very um, like packed with people. But there are some areas, uh, um, people are also a bit worried. They do go home early and they do not wander too much uh, around as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. So you guys have, do you have some big changes happening? How about Susan and Paul, do you want to say anything? And again, you don't have to, but just if you want to, we'd love to hear from you. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, things are going well where we are in Minnesota. It's been opened for quite a while um, okay. as far as the COVID restrictions. Um, because I'm immunocompromised, even though I had three vaccinations, I, that doesn't mean that it worked because of the medicine I'm on. So my right. husband. He, he works at a machine shop and he ma he's been masking me with an N95 all these months. Um, oh, okay. and he still is. And I do when I go out since it, for a little while I didn't. And then because of the 
the, the Delta variant, they, my uh, transplant team recommended I start masking again. So now when we're walking outside in public where there's not, you know, in the, where there's open space and there's not many people, right. but in stores and like I go to daily mass and I wear my mask there and that kind of thing. But I got to go to daily mass today and I went to adoration. Okay. Oh, well. wonderful. Beautiful. Oh, cool. Beautiful. So where wow. in Minnesota are you? We're in Rochester, about 10 minutes okay. away from the Mayo Clinic. Yeah. We relocated okay. here because originally from Michigan. Um, we moved here about three years ago in anticipation of my heart transplant. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You're, you guys, that's, that's, you're dealing with a lot then too. Yeah. And you have kids? Yeah. I can't remember. Yes. We have a 25-year-old daughter who got married last year. She's, mm -hmm. she's in Wisconsin, in Port Washington, Wisconsin with her husband. Um, and hopefully we're moving there as long as my health stays stable. Because I don't know if I mentioned it, like, uh, I got my transplant last in February 2020, and then I got breast cancer in October of 2020. Oh, yeah, you did. So no, as goodness. long as everything stays stable, and I'm coming up on my year exam on that, so praying for that right. to be clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, amen. We'll include that in our prayers. Yeah. Everything stays stable, hopefully, like in about a year and a half when our next apartment lease is up, we'll move to Wisconsin to be close to her. Ah, so, okay. great. That's great. That's where I grew up. I grew up in Racine, Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Down oh, in the great. southeast corner of Wisconsin. Yeah. All right. If, does Paul have anything to say or not? <laughs> you don't have to. You can say pass. <laughs> He's quiet. <laughs> That's no okay. Problem. Quiet's good. You bet. We'll jump in quiet's anytime good. during the thing if you want. And David, Mary, do either of you guys want to say anything? And again, nobody has to say anything. Hey, yeah, we had, we're off to a great start this week. Good. We awesome. um, celebrated our 33rd wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Awesome. Friday. Beautiful. So we went down to Buford, South Carolina for mm. their annual shrimp festival. Ooh. Oh, wow and just had a nice kind of party atmosphere with thousands of people eating shrimp and dancing to the um the live music that was on Aww. that sounds so amazing that was, how long did you go for uh just the weekend nice but Aww. you will appreciate this my wife got me a present oh yeah and it was a prayer book called spousal prayer yay ah, good, good good it's such a good book. recommended by carol last week so she was able to get it on amazon and it came within two or three days so we right. had it in time for the weekend so we prayed um read out of that book together isn't it um, great oh, that's great yeah it was it was good and it's it was kind of neat book. seeing those sections the two sections that you had focused on what well, was just the very beginning more yeah. impactful to you know read it again yeah, and I think it's quite cheap, isn't it? Like ten bucks or something, or I mean, it's not very much. And that you're you're asking her to do oh, yeah. all for present <laughs> cost. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, maybe more. Anyway, they're not too expensive. You said so it was a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Like, at <laughs> least, at least. <laughs> well, it sounds like a wonderful anniversary. That's great. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was good. good. All right, um, we have, I don't know if Maureen's still here, but it looks like- She said she had to take a phone call. Oh, Carol. okay. She said and she'd be back, but she had to okay, take a phone good. call. Okay, sounds good. And Kathy, I, again, nobody has to say anything, but if you want to say anything, jump in there, Kathy. And if you don't, that's totally fine. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hi, how are you doing? I don't know. Can you hear me now? I can, yep. yeah. Yeah, yep, I can. We can hear you fine. I apologize because I just jumped in. So I'm not that's sure great. I missed the first oh, few minutes. <laughs> no problem, Kathy. That's, no, okay. that's great. All we're doing tonight, we're going to be talking about fear and about peace. Um, and we, and I just said, Paul started and then I rudely interrupted him. And I just said, I kind of wanted to hear from everybody just because we, we always have a small group, but it's really, it's just lovely people. And I just really like hearing, you know, like, I just want to get to know you guys a bit. And so, so we're just kind of saying hi and how, how I'm doing this week and anything that you want to say. So you can say you. pretty much anything. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're back on and, and feeling better. So that's yeah, very good. Yeah. And, um, 
the whole thing with this fear, I'm so, I'm so tired of the fear. I just, yeah. I, I honestly, I'm just so tired of it. Yeah. I feel, mm -hmm. I just want to live because yeah, exactly. to be constantly in fear of dying yeah. is not living. Exactly. No, that's right. You're right. I'm not the way God intended. Yeah. No. I, I, yeah. I just feel very deeply in my heart of that. And, um, and I'm yeah. actually very sad when I see the number of people that are, are very much still um, in that fear mode. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. Like, I mean, I feel like I'm fighting it quite a bit and yeah. it's difficult. It's hard, I, you know, I mean, no, is it, did we get to hear from everybody at least? I don't know if Maureen got back on or not because I can't see everybody on here this minute. She might still be on her oh, phone. Oh, Maureen, are you, are you there? Because I, I want to I want to pick up off some, some things that you said, Kathy. But if Maureen's there, speak up. And if not, then we'll just jump. Um, she said she had to take okay. a phone call. No problem. Well, I just want to kind of build off of what you were saying, Kathy, because um, I you know what? I, I, I mean, there might be some people who haven't felt any fear in the past year and a half, but I would think they would be very few and far between because it seems to me and I've, I mean, I have talked with lots and lots of people, but but just reading, you know, different reports in different places, it seems like like a lot of people are super fearful. And and whether you're super fearful of COVID or whether you're super fearful of the vaccination or whether you're really scared of dying, like you said, Kathy, or whether you're really scared of totalitarian governments or whether you're really scared of, you know, like, like how long is this lockdown going to go on like forever and ever, amen? I mean, like whatever... You know, like, but we've all been, I mean, like, for instance, here's just a, for instance, today, just like a couple hours ago, one of my friends texted and she was saying how there's military at AHS, which means Alberta Health Services. Okay. Yes. So I know. So it's kind of like, oh, well, that's lovely. It's like, what are they going to be doing? Um, and why would they have military at Alberta Health Services? So, I mean, you know, and, and again, we just, I, what we have to do whenever we're afraid of whatever i mean maybe i'll let you jump in paul i'll just talk about fear and then you can talk about what we're going to do about it well 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 i i just want to talk a little bit about how in, how fear can impact, impact our marriage right our physically and, and, and spirit oh sorry i'll be quiet right and and so so any of you who want to contribute to this part of the conversation please do so but but one of the one of the things that fear does immediately is it robs us of our joy right because you can't really rejoice when your heart you know your soul is gripped by fear and uh, and saint paul reminds us to rejoice at all times right mm -hmm. and and really rejoicing is one of the antidotes to fear um if we turn from fear to gratitude uh, and, and we give to God what we're afraid of, you know, or the reason for our fear. Uh, he'll, you know, he'll take our fear and, and replace it with gratitude. But it's, it, ultimately, it is really our decision. It's our choice, what we do with our fear, you know. And, and so fear can, first of all, rob us of our joy. It can rob us of our peace you know because again uh, it's hard to be at peace tranquil yeah. you know trusting when you know we're on the verge of panic and in in marriage it can it can disrupt our unity the unity in our home uh, you know particularly if we're disagreeing and you know and one one spouse is is perhaps more afraid than the other um, and fear can make us anxious it can make us grumpy. That's okay. Oh, that's okay. You can just, yeah, that's fine. Or you, can, no you could, yeah, yes, don't she worry did. about she it. Muted. No problem. Okay. And fear keeps us unfocused. You know, sometimes, you know, when, when I let the fear um, rise within me, I find it very difficult to focus and to um, <laughs> concentrate. And so, you know, we want to avoid fear for that reason too. Uh, but on the other hand, fear can lead us to prayer. You know, I mean, what's the first thing we do when we're, we're afraid? Well, 
we often turn to God. Um, when Jesus was going with Jairus to the house of Jairus to heal his daughter, one of the neighbors said, don't bother the teacher anymore. You know, the child is dead. And, and, and the first words out of Jesus' mouth were, do not fear, only believe, and, and, and the child shall be well. And, and so when we hear something that raises fear in us, then we have to hear that, that, that loving command of Jesus, do not be afraid, only trust. And, and, and that is possible for us, right? I mean, Jesus would never command what he doesn't give the grace to fulfill in us, right? So whatever is the source of your fear, and Carol listed several things, you know, whether it's, whether it's COVID or another illness, or some people are really afraid of the vaccines. Some are afraid, like Carol said, of totalitarian movements around the world. Just give it to Jesus. Be not afraid because fear really is useless. It doesn't lead to anything, anything good. Well, I, I don't um, know if it's completely yeah. useless, Paul. I mean, like, okay, yeah. because God gave us um, all of our emotions. And so fear can motivate us to take action to safeguard, right? Like probably, probably yeah. Joseph, okay. Joseph, St. Joseph was afraid. Well, no, maybe he wasn't. He just got that. He got that dream. And he knew he had to obey God. But I mean, they would have been afraid when they're running away from Herod. I mean, knowing that yep. Herod wants to kill their, you know, well, I was going to say their son, but also God, you know, God made flesh. Um, uh, you know, so uh, there, yeah, I think, I mean, fear is a natural, I mean, it's an emotion. And so it, there's gift in fear. But, but I think, um, but it can very easily send us to the not good. Where? Oh, are you talking with somebody? Oh, downstairs. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I just saw you talking with somebody. Yeah, um, I was just see. talking to John. He said okay. natural fear is a good thing. You know, natural like fear. Fear, fear, you know, fear of a, of a deadly snake or, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, or, you know, uh, yeah. it, it keeps us on our toes, so to speak, and can spare us, you know, harm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Or if I if I see something falling from the sky, <laughs> that's not a very good example. That doesn't happen very often. But I mean, okay, if I see something coming towards me, um, and you know, I mean, I, I was thinking of one um, a video that I saw a while ago, and this guy just jumped out of the way of the car just in the nick of. I missed him by like about an inch, right? So I mean, yeah, fear can, yeah, get us to move really quickly. But it's just you know, it's um, and so that's good. Um, that's a good thing. And so thank you, God, for fear. But help us to turn, like, to respond appropriately to it, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Hi, Maureen. Welcome back. Okay. So, um, uh, and, and so sometimes fear is a lack of trust in God. You know, not always, but it can be. And, and fear can lead us to panic, to paralysis, uh, to some dysfunction, sometimes to poor decision making. You know, if we're if we're operating out of fear when we're making decisions, sometimes we don't do the most reasonable or logical things. Um, again, what we do with our fear can either draw us apart, or it can can drive us apart, or it can draw us closer together. Because, you know, when we we face our fears together, then that can you know lead to greater intimacy. Uh, sometimes our fear drives us to escapism. You know, we'll turn to distractions of any, you know, all kinds of, whether it be, you know, video games or pornography or drinking or, or drugs. Lots of um, bad that kind of yeah. escape, yeah, that kind of escapism doesn't really deal with the source of our fear. It just numbs our fear and doesn't, uh, doesn't move us in a direction that is helpful. No, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas said that fear is such a powerful emotion for humans, then that when we allow it to take us over, it drives compassion right out of our hearts. So we do want to be in control of our, our fear. And mm -hmm. because, yeah, I, I think that's well put, it drives compassion right out of our hearts. And so sometimes we, yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, you finish your thought and then I'll say something. No, no, go ahead. Okay. I, I just think that's super insightful and tells us part of what's happening in our culture right now, because the compassion has been going 
you know, a lot in our culture. I think, I think all of us have felt that somewhat. And it's like, you know, because so many of us have, me included, I mean, have been afraid during this past year and a half, um, you know, it's really easy to see people that we don't agree with on, you know, either views on of vaccines, even for instance, you know, it's like, they're the bad guys or they're dumb because they're doing this or the opposite saying they're the bad guys, they're dumb because they're, they're doing this or they're not doing this right and but and and it, and it's very easy out of our fear because it, it's such a it is a very strong emotion and so it's a very strong emotion and so we feel like we it, it just stirs up our body like there's so many physiological responses to fear and so i think that it is difficult because of the intensity to lay whatever it is we're afraid of aside long enough to say, you know what, there's different perspectives, I, to be reasonable and just to say, um, you know, and, and well, and reasonable and loving because I, it's been really sad um, just to see people not caring for each other or saying things like, oh, we'll just let them, like it's sort of even like, some, like I don't, I, I do have a Facebook account, but I'm very rarely on it. I, and so, but, but anyways, some of the stuff on social media where it's kind of all just let him die and from both sides about like that's just and that's just one example i mean there's all of the uh the black lives matter stuff and the antifa and the i mean there's there's so many things going on that are or afghanistan or like up here like the uh, reconciliation like some of the uh residential schools and i mean there's and and burning down churches and um there's just a lot of hate along with the fear anyways I just thought that maybe read the St. Thomas Aquinas quote again, because I thought that was sure. really good. I mean, um, as though, like he's a, a doctor of the church, so he probably does know a few things. Angelic doctor there. Fear yeah. is such a powerful emotion for humans then that when we allow it to take us over, it drives compassion right out of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's interesting, um, St. Paul in the letter to the Hebrews talks a bit about fear and how the devil um, has, through the fear of death, has subjected people to slavery all their life, right? So when we have, when we have lost our fear of death, then we are truly free. And because yeah. uh, there's, there's nothing anybody can hold over us then, right? You know, um, hmm. Hmm. that's that's how the martyrs could, you know, face the the lions and the guillotine and firing squads and burning at stake and all that um, because they had lost the fear of death and you know and they they were able to entrust themselves completely to God. Don't you think? I'm th I'm just thinking maybe they hadn't completely lost the fear of death because I think there is. Again, again natural, there's a, a there's a natural fear of death. there's a natural fear of death. Right. And, and, and so which even is a, even it, Jesus in the garden at Gethsemane, right? I mean, he I don't I don't know if you would call it well, yeah, you probably would call it fear. But um you know, I mean, again, because that's a natural emotion. And so you know, and he asked that the cup be that he not have to drink the cup. Um if it be his father's will. Yeah, if it be his father's will. But I think like the martyrs, I mean, they might have still been fearful of death, but it was just maybe that there's so much more, like when you're so close to God, so close to, um, and, and when you love God really with your whole heart, I, well, again, how do we get there? But I mean, the more we love God and the more we're looking forward to heaven, the less fear we're going to have about death. So there's probably i guess i was just going to say there's there would be some fear of death probably so i don't know what do you guys think i think that's one of the attributes that that made them martyrs was their courage in the face of fear so yeah. it didn't go away they mastered it that's right uh, that makes sense yeah yeah a, a courageous person that's a good point a courageous person doesn't feel you know is is in a sense not fearless they feel the fear and they do the right thing anyway, you know, despite the fear. That's courage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. 
Uh, a couple more quotes by saints uh, on fear, if I may. Sure. Um, this is St. Margaret Mary. He says, he only asks of you abandonment and perfect submission. Nothing displeases him so much as your uneasiness and despondency. What do you fear? Is he not powerful enough to support you? Why then are you so reserved with him? Let him act, St. Margaret Mary. Um, uh, you know, again, I, I think of, of Jesus and, the, and the, the apostles on the boat in the storm. And, you know, they're terrified. They said, Lord, we're perishing. And they wake him up and, 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 and Jesus upbraids them. He says, oh, you know, ye have little faith. Why were you afraid? You know, because, I mean, he is the master of the, of the, the seas and the winds. And it, the more we can just trust him, the more we can uh, believe, the less we'll be terrified by our circumstances. Well, you were saying, Paul, earlier, uh, like just around supper time, that you'd had a hard day and that there was, but I, was there fear in there or was that more, what was that? I'm putting him in a vulnerable spot. How are you doing there, really? Uh, okay, no, no, I mean, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I was kind of letting the anxiety thermometer rise a little bit um, just because, you know, I'm going to be 65 later this month and, and you know, and I'm going to be on a senior's pension, which isn't all that big because, you know, I haven't worked full time for a while and, 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 you know, and we're trying to make a go of it with, um, you know, a marriage business. So far, it hasn't, you know, done much for us monetarily, but... Um, you haven't tried we, to sell anything yet. <laughs> that's right. And, and But we're going to. Well, and, actually, you know, just so, so you... Well, oh, sorry. I'll bring it up later. Because I was... <laughs> we're, we're actually just going to do donation-based thing. So anyways, for our course. In the future, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but... And, and so, but then, you know, I just have to, you know, I mean my favorite prayer right now is Jesus, I trust in you, you know, Jesus, mm -hmm. I trust in you. And, and just to kind of bring the anxiety th thermometer down and, mm -hmm. and, and, and to trust him, uh, you know, I, I, I have a friend who just the other day was saying, you know, the crazier the world gets, he, he's just he's, the way he put it. I'm just unnaturally happy. I think he could have said supernaturally happy yeah. because he knows that God's at work and God is going to do good things and God will bring good out of all the kind of madness and confusion that's gone around in the world. Let and me, so can I jump in again when you're finished that? Yeah. And, and so, uh, uh, you know, I want a, a stronger, more robust faith like that. Yeah. Go one ahead, of the Kara. things, um, that when when we heard this, this friend of ours, William, um, when he said that, I just, it reminded me that a while ago, I just, I read, I can't remember where I read it, but it was saying that God brings vast, vast goodness, vast good out of evil. And I just thought, you know, when you've got this much evil happening in the world, and there is a lot of evil going on in the world. I mean, just some crazy things going on in the world. But um when, when, you know, that God, when, when it, there's such a mess and there's so much evil, God can bring so much good out of it. And I do believe he's, I do believe that he's at work. Um, but that's what we have to remind ourselves of because sometimes we just see the evil. I mean, I, it's just so out there right now. I do believe, you know, that, I mean, Satan's working overtime and he's, all his demons and, and there are a lot of dark things. Um, you know, a lot of people are taking advantage of, of all this COVID-19 stuff to, to control and to suppress and to oppress and to, um, you know, manipulate. And to, and to make a lot of money. <laughs> well, that's for sure. I mean, that's, that may have, that may be the main motivation. I don't know. I don't know. But um, so, yeah, and there's, um, and it's not just in that area either, but like, like I said before, it just seems like it's a more vicious culture now. It's not as kind and compassionate as it was before. And there's more, and it's like, it's like whatever, the powers that be are, are trying to incite division and, and incite hatred and, and incite fear. 
And so it's kind of like we really do as Christians um, need to need to, you know, really work as much as we can to believe to, to strengthen our faith so that we can say, whatever you bring, Lord, you're going to give me the grace to um, you're going to give me the grace to keep to keep going and even to flourish. And, and I mean, it's, that doesn't mean that, you know, some of us might not be o- oppressed, persecuted, or even die. I mean, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. But, but it does mean that we do have that sh- assurance from God that he will be with us and that he loves us. And so, so like when William said that the other day, we were at a meeting with him and he just said, oh, and he, he genuinely does. He's one of those people that just, he really is very joyful. And I think his, deep, his faith is very deep. Um, yeah, and I was trying to, I had it in my head, sometimes my head, mm. um, there was somebody else who I was trying to think of who's really joyful or had a statement about, didn't that, did I bring that up to you, Paul? Maybe not. I don't recall. Okay. Anyways, um, how about you guys? Uh, like, what do you have to, what do you think about this? Do you think that we're overstating it about where the world's at or about the fear? What do you think? Jump in there. I don't think you're overstating it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I now, um, I'll admit, I'm, I feel quite frustrated and I'm angry at times mm-hmm. about that which is not truth. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And when I, when I see from people that I know personally and then what is presented to us and it, it, uh, it, they're just, it's just not true. I, I find myself getting angry and I'm typically not an angry person. So yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling with that. And, you know, so I pray, I, I try to go to mass a couple, three times a week. And of course that, that helps, but I, there's still, I feel like it's like, I've got these spidey senses to things that are not true. Yeah. And I'm going, Lord, really? Again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I feel like it, it actually hurts it. I feel yeah. like my heart hurts at times yeah, yeah. with it. So, yeah. Yeah. No, no, uh, that makes sense. I, I'm with you, Kathy. I just, I, I feel the same way. And I just, I mean, because the thing is we can't have compassion. We can't have love without truth. So if there's not truth, if there's not truth there, then there's not really love. Like, uh, what's a good example? Paul, you're usually better with examples. Um, okay, like, um, like, okay, within, since we talk, we're supposed to be talking about marriage quite a bit here. But um, so in marriage, you know, if I'm not being truthful, like, let's say Paul has a fault. He doesn't have any, but let's say he does. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and if, if, if I just basically there, if I was going to just leave it there, that wouldn't even be loving, right? Um, no, like if, if you're covering up for somebody, let's say, okay, let's say Paul was an alcoholic and, and I did cover up for him all the time and he's not, but let's say I did and I covered up for him all the time and I pretended there wasn't, it wasn't an issue. And I, you know, and I called his boss if he was hungover or something like that. I mean, um, that even though, you know, it might seem like that's a compassionate thing. It's not because we're not dealing with the truth. So we do need, we de- we need truth. Truth and love always have to be together. If I take truth out of the equation, it's not love anymore. And, and, yeah. but also on the other hand, if I take love out of, like, if I'm just blasting somebody with truth um, and there's not love there, well, then it's not even a fullness of truth either. I mean, because those two things have to be together truth and love we need them both and uh, it's sadly there are many lies um of all kinds of sort all sorts of lies and 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 you don't know who you can trust anymore i honestly don't know what media to listen to i i certainly don't trust most of the mainstream media but i also a lot of the alternative media is like just wacky and i mean some of it's quite good and i do believe some of it um, but like, how do you discern? It's such a hard time to discern. And, and then you're supposed to be making decisions. And so if you're not even sure what you can trust, like which media, you, what, what story can I trust here? Then how do I make a good decision, right? So this is all very difficult. Uh, anybody else have something to say? Or you can jump in again, Kathy, but anybody else have something to say? Yeah, go for it. Um, I've honestly just turned good, bad, I don't know what, but I've had to just turn off the media completely 
Yeah. I can't yeah. make heads or tails out of it. It all sounds like from both sides of the aisle lies, like in exaggerations and trying to just stick the other person. Yeah. So I found since I just turned it off, I'm just a lot happier person. I may not That's be the worst. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think no. it's making a whole lot of difference in my small corner of the world. I go like I I watch the cats. I watch EWTN Catholic News. Yeah, I will watch that. Um, yeah. like a couple times a week just to keep make sure I'm not missing out. And I do call my nine year old father who watches um a particular news channel every evening, and mm -hmm. then I have to go through and try to go. He's freaking out because he's elderly. He's by himself. So he's really sucked into this. Yeah. He thinks we're going to get taken over by communists. He grew up in Nazi Germany. Mm. So mm. he gets really anxious. So I have to go through and try to like dial it back and look up mm. stuff for him. That's quite not exactly what happened, Dad. That's not good, but that's not exactly what happened. So mm. I do do that. But other than that, I pretty much have to just turn it off. I've cut my Facebook that up down a lot. I used to argue with people. I get like she's uh Kathy said where your heart would hurt when you know something isn't true and mm -hmm. people are just absolutely convinced that it is mm -hmm. and it's just and they don't want to even see any alternative they don't want to look at the facts they're just already planted their flag where they're at and they're good with mm -hmm. that <laughs> so, yeah and right. I wasted a lot of time and energy and aggravation mm -hmm. and stress so I just had to finally just you know what just back off Susan go to mass, watch the Catholics channel and <laughs> leave it alone because I just Yeah, can't. no, I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. I mean, a, a lot of, you know, too much browsing about looking at news and stuff can be really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Dissipating. You know, it, 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 it just pulls us away from what, you know, we're supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be thinking about, uh, you know, the duty right at hand you know it, it pulls me away from you know the children or the people right who are living with me so i, I see great wisdom in cutting back on on all the news well and it, again if we knew well, but kind of like kathy was saying though um i sort of have a spidey sense too and, and I, I again i but i but i don't think that it's, i certainly don't think it's infallible at by any stretch but so, and so, but when you've got people, you know, believing, uh, like even it's just easy to say because people are usually really for or really against vaccines. So if you've got people who really, they're positive that they're good and you've got people who are positive that they're evil. Okay. Like, how do you, how do you compromise on that? There, I mean, God knows. Well, and I think people, probably the makers of these know whether they're good or whether they're bad. Right. I mean, but but I mean, I can't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really difficult because, you know, what people do feel, I, I feel really strongly one way, you know, and, and other people feel very strongly another way. So it's, it's, yeah. And, 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 and then like the whole, the whole thing about science is become kind of like a religion, but then people claim science on both sides. And so that's difficult. Right. And, and there is, there is good science and bad science. I mean, there is like, there's good studies that are solid and that are peer reviewed and that actually, you know, like the actual methodology that they use is, is accurate and, and, and the summary accurately shows what they discover. I mean, and then there's really lousy, like really, you know, like you can, you can make a study kind of say what you wanted to say. So, it's, this is all really tough. I mean, I do believe that we're in a very tough, a very tough stage. I mean, maybe there were other times in history that were this hard, but I mean, I, I can't think of one right now because there's so much information coming at us. And yes, I think, Susan, I think you're right about, like, there's no way that we can absorb, you know, a hundredth of it, right? Like, you just can't, there, I mean, probably whatever, ten thousandths of it, but, but, like I do, I kind of, I'm sort of in between. Like, I feel like I have to keep up somewhat, but at times I've gone way overboard and at times I've completely cut it out too. And so, you know, and then I have to, it's hard. The balancing thing is hard and fear. Since we're talking about fear, you know, you can also feel fear. I mean, 
I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, but there can be fear if I know too much or there can, I can be fearful if I'm just like, well, I have no idea what's going on. Maybe that's fearful. I don't know. I kind of had to deal with the whole vaccination situation. I have a friend yeah. that we've been friends since we were 12, basically yeah. like a sister. We've gone through everything in life together. Usually I've always been on the same page about everything. Um, my transplant team at Mayo Clinic strongly encouraged vaccination. They took the heart out of me and put a new one in. So I trust them. Yeah. So I was okay with yeah. that. Um, yeah. I went with the ones that the church said that were okay, which was Pfizer. Um, she, I had no idea that none of her family had planned to get vaccinated. So yeah. I finally just asked her, we were getting ready to come to Michigan. I said, you got all vaccinated? <laughs> and she said, no. And it caused, we have been friends forever. Yeah. Um, the first fight since we were teenagers in high school, and it wasn't really a fight fight at all. Mm -hmm. It was just my feelings got hurt, her feeling. Yeah. We were both like, did not understand each other. Yeah. And I was really hurt because I was taking it right personally. I'm like, I could die if I get this thing. I think you mm -hmm. should protect me, you know, like this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But then I had to pray about mm -hmm. it and say, you know what, God, I will do the best I can for what I think I know is right to do. Mm -hmm. She will do the best she can for what mm -hmm. she thinks she mm -hmm. knows is right to do. And we love each other and we're not going to let this come between us. And we just yeah. had to be that way. And I was no way going to let this. And I've seen stuff online where people won't see their family or they won't talk, yeah. to, especially in the transplant community, because it's a scary thing for us. We can go into rejection with COVID because our immune system gets overworked. There's like a lot of other factors involved when you're immunocompromised. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of really, and I, people get out of what should I do? I'm like, you should love your family. Do you yes. take whatever precautions you need to do? That doesn't mean they don't love you or they don't care about you. Cause for two seconds, I kind of went, what? When <laughs> I kind of did that in my head, I'm like, how could she not do this? Blah, 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 blah. And then I had to just yeah. get my head together and go, wait, she's always been a loving, caring, compassionate person. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that she's still that person and that I need yeah. to not take it as yeah. a personal and I never right. will. I think we do have to I think you're right Susan we really have to try hard to not make this personal but unfortunately it is it is it's, it's, it's a very personal choice right and 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 it's and and you know yes there's some friends because yeah I mean I don't know. I don't want to get into all of this. It's difficult because I don't really want to just be talking about vaccines right now. But but I but I I do think as far as the fear, which is what we're talking about right now, um, I feel like okay. Like I have a friend who's decided like she's not getting the vaccine, but her husband has, and he's telling her that she's selfish, right? And so like this in in this kind of situation where we have husband and wife, or where we have our our mom, I you know and we do have people on, on opposing side. I mean, it feels like opposing. And so it's kind of like, okay, Lord, what would you have us do? So I think, again, we have to hold truth and love together. However, the thing is, is that both sides are quite sure that they're truthful. So that's the hard part. It's really, it, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. I don't know. If anybody have any good yeah. idea solutions for this? Because well, I don't, I don't think we're going to solve the I know, I know. Issue. No, Why don't we that's get back to, a little bit back okay. on the topic of fear? I just have a few okay. Bible verses that I think are really good. Yeah, and um, I have some stuff that I want to share too. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, because so, the time goes so fast. Okay, go. What time is it, Carl? I don't, I don't well, it's already 7.43. I mean, okay, we can go okay, a few okay. minutes over, but I don't, really don't like going past like 8.05. So, okay. Okay. So, um, so God says to Abram, before he was Abraham, fear not. I'm your shield. Your reward mm -hmm. shall be very great. Or again, uh, to Abraham, I'm the God of Abraham. Your oh no, now he's talking to Isaac. I'm the God of Abraham, your father. Fear not, for I'm with you and will bless you. And then and and Moses then later said to the people, Fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. And then later in that very same chapter, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord. So they weren't fearing the Egyptians anymore. Now they're fearing the Lord. But that's and a different believed, kind of fear, right? Yeah, that's right. right. And they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Um, 
from numbers we read only do not rebel against the lord and do not fear the people of the land for they are bread for us their protection is removed from them and the lord is with us do not fear them um behold this is deuteronomy the lord your god has set the land before you go up take possession as the lord the god of your fathers has told you do not fear or be dismayed um just in let me deuteronomy jump in again. for a sec just let me jump yeah. in for a sec you're not going to try and do all 365 do not be no, afraid right i'm not because <laughs> there are i heard that you probably many of you probably heard that too that god it worked out that way in scripture that there's it's something about about not being afraid or be not afraid or fear not there, it's 365 times in the bible which is very interesting since that's how many days there are one for each day yeah it is that's cool. right. you shall not fear them for it is the lord your god who fights for you it's just good to remember these things right be strong and of good courage. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. I could go on and on. There's so many good ones. Maybe if you um, do you have some from the New Testament? Yep. Yep. Just maybe um, like three or four. Yeah, just a few. Yeah. Uh, from Matthew 14. Um, but immediately he spoke to them, Jesus saying, take heart. It is I have no fear. This is when they saw him walking on the water and they thought it was a ghost, you know. So take heart, it is I have no fear. Or in Luke 12, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Um, oh, yeah, and First John, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and he who fears is not perfected in love. And so that just reminds me today, you know, as I was struggling a little bit with anxiety, a little bit with fear, it just means that I need to be further perfected in love so that, you know, I'm, I'm solidly grounded, rooted in the love of God. And, and the more deeply I put down roots in the love of God, the less fear and anxiety I'll have. Um, right, and, and then there's lots of admonitions about fearing the Lord, you know. To have this this deep love, reverence, respect for the Lord, and and that is a good kind of fear, and and uh, and and that that brings with it great reward. I, I won't read those verses. I, I have quite a few listed here. I, but... I have to get to something too, Paul. Okay, go for it. Okay, this is one of my favorite books. Okay, it's called Searching for. Can you guys see it? Searching yep. for. Where's the camera on this thing? Is it right in the middle? Searching for and maintaining peace. Okay, by um, Father Jacques Philippe. So if you- Yeah, the subtitle is A Small Treatise on Peace of Heart. Um, if you have not read this book, seriously, look at how skinny it is. It's just tiny. You can read it in like a couple hours. Um, it's really, really good. It's like um, Archbishop Miller, who's the, uh, the bishop in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, he actually recommended it to his whole archdiocese to read. It's- it's actually, why do I like it so much? Because I, I think it summarizes, he basically says that the, that the Christian uh, battle, how does he put it? He puts, uh, he says basically that the, the spiritual, spiritual battle is a battle for peace. Like that's what we, Satan is always going to be trying to get us away from peace and into fear. That's what his, hey, Carol, he's all about. Sorry to interrupt, what? but my battery is about to die. Oh, okay. And Do so you want to come up and join plug me? In? Oh, did I? Oh, I don't know. Why don't you just come up and join me? We can okay. just squish on to, just bring a chair okay. up. Um, okay. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll just leave then from here. Yeah. Bye. Oh, wait. Wait, Paul. What? No. That, well, you're yeah. the administrator. Is that going to shut everything down? No, no. Because remember, we swapped. So you're oh, at okay. the administrator's. Okay. Okay, then now you can probably turn yours off then. Okay, I'll yeah. just keep talking while you do that. Um, okay, so a small treatise on peace of heart. I would recommend, I would highly recommend this book. I've also done it in a women's book study. And if some of you are, may be quite familiar with Father Jacques Philippe, he's written a lot of spiritual books and he's solid, like theologically, you don't have to worry about him being flaky. And, you know, I mean, because sometimes there's a lot of flaky books out there. Um, that get us off track or that could could get us off track if we don't you know anyways so but this one so he's he's talking about um 
that, that really the spiritual battle is one of trying to, to maintain peace. And so whenever I'm feeling not at peace, which sadly happens too often, um, it is because like, it, it is because like Paul was saying, it could be a lack of love, charity, but I think a lot of it is a lack of faith. And, you know, um, and so this one, interior peace, the road to saintliness. If we want to, if we want to become like these martyrs, you know, um, that's, that's the way to do it, to try to search for like, okay, like, let's say I'm feeling fearful right now. Um, so, but, but Lord, help me, help me to come to a place of peace. And the only way that I can really do that is by coming to him. I can't like work that up on my own. You know, I mean, I can't just say, oh, well, I'm just going to be peaceful. Are you coming over? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Come on over. Just grab a chair. Okay. Um, so, so, okay. I'm just going to read a few things in here. So um, I'll just read the first sentence here okay. in order to understand how fundamental I'm up higher on my chair right now, but I'm that's sorry. okay. Okay. So in order to understand how fundamental it is for the development of the Christian life to strive to acquire and maintain peace of heart, the first thing of which we must be convinced is that all the good that we can do comes from God and from him alone. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So, you know, when I start thinking that I can fix myself or fix Paul or fix one of my kids or fix the church or fix, you know, like some of these problems that people are having, like whatever, or I think that I can figure out what the truth is or something. I mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous for one thing, but another thing, it's like God is saying, apart from me, you can do nothing. Like you can't, you know, I can't, I mean, my next breath comes from God. Um, at, at any moment, anything could happen. Like, well, I, I guess that's probably not the right thing, weird way to put it. But, but um, it's like, we are powerless to do good by ourselves. Okay, but any good that I'm going to do is going to be because God is helping me to do the good. And, um, and like St. Therese of Lisieux, the little flower, she said the best thing, that God could have done in her soul was to have shown her her smallness and her powerlessness. And so I think maybe we need to think about that in the midst of the different fears that we have. Like, you know what? I'm small. I'm little. I am powerless. But what that can do then is it can draw us to, to our Savior, to God, and to just say, I'm powerless. I'm small. There's nothing I can do. Please, Lord, you do this. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, and, and in our marriage, maybe we're struggling in our marriage. It's like, okay. I'm small, he's small or whatever. Like we can't, we can't do this on our own, but Lord, we're turning to you and we're turning to you in, in, in the church, in the sacrament, you can, you want to pour grace into my heart. And so, but I can't, I can't work that up on my own. I can't work up grace. There's a, a, a prayer that's similar to the Jesus I trust in you. It's Jesus, I surrender <laughs> myself to you. Take care of everything. Yeah, that's I don't good. know if because I'm not wearing the ear thing. I don't know if you can oh. hear that. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We don't okay. have you the ear splitter. Yeah. Yeah, we can. That's okay. So, yes. um, yeah, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could share. That's all right. Oh, okay. Um, I think we have a splitter somewhere, but we're not going to find it at the last few minutes here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to share a few, few other things here. How can I let Jesus act in me? How can I permit the grace of God to freely operate in my life? That's the big question. That's what we need to be asking. How can I permit the grace of God to freely operate in my life? That's what this little book is about. And so that's why we all have to read it. And that's why I have to read it again, because it's been quite a few years since I read it. So I'm, I, I'm glad I got into this book today. Um, so here he's saying, here's an important paragraph. That at which we should aim is then not principally to impose a lot of things on ourselves, Sometimes I want to do that. As good as they may seem with our own intelligence, according to our projects, et cetera. Rather, we must try to discover the disposition of our soul, the profound attitude of our heart, and the spiritual conditions that permit God to act in us. So I'm just trying, I just need to figure out how can I allow God to act in me? And this is whether we're talking about a marital problem or we're talking about a problem at work or with a relationship with someone else or whatever it is, or like some of this, you know, the things happening in the world right now. So we must try, 
So we're, we're not sitting there just trying to impose things on ourselves or do projects. Rather, we must try to discover the disposition of our soul, the profound attitude of our heart and the spiritual conditions that permit God to act in us. It is only thus that we can bear fruit, fruit that will last. Okay, because if I try and make fruit myself, it's not going to be good. Okay, it has to be God's fruit or it's not going to last. Okay, and then um, two more little things because we're right at the end of our, close to the end of our time. Okay, the essential truth that we wish to present and develop is the following. So this is the thesis of this book. To permit the grace of God to act in us and to produce in us with, with the cooperation, of course, of our will, our intelligence and our capabilities. All those good works for which God prepared us beforehand so that we might lead our lives in the performance of good works from Ephesians 2. It is of the greatest importance that we strive to acquire and maintain an interior peace, the peace of our hearts. That's what this little book's about. How do I get there? How do I get it that it's of the greatest importance that we, that we strive to acquire and maintain an interior peace? We've all been talking about how this is a struggle, right? This is a struggle to acquire and maintain an interior peace. I, I have not had a day in my life, I'm sure, where I have had been at peace all day. Um, and it's been hard this past year and a half. So, but this is, this is, um, he talks about, he, he talks about the surface of a lake. So if you have a lake and the sun is shining and the lake is completely calm, you're going to be able to see the image of the sun in the lake. But if it's rough, if there's wind and there's, you're not going to be able to hardly see, you'll see little specks, you know, but you're not going to be able to see a reflection of the sun. And in the same way, Satan is trying to ruffle our waters so that we can't really shine the sun, the, you know, like the image of Christ to the world. Like we can't, we can't bring Christ's light and love to other people when we're all frantic and not at peace. Um, and so I, I thought that was a good image. And the more our soul is peaceful and tranquil, the more God is reflected in it. The more his image expresses itself in us, the more his grace acts through us. I'm going to read that again. The more our soul is peaceful and tranquil, the more God is reflected in it. The more his image expresses itself in us, the more his grace acts through us. So if we want to be saints and we want to, the people, we want to affect our, our spouse or our children, the, all the, the people that we love in our lives, it is a matter of getting to, please God, somehow with your help and my cooperation. I do need his grace to do that. And I just, I need to learn how to cooperate. And so this whole little book is kind of about that. Um, yeah, another way that he puts it, he goes, the more our soul is peaceful, balanced, and surrendered, the more this good, with a capital G, communicates itself to us and to others through us. Because if I'm not at peace, I can't really hear God's voice, right? I mean, it's hard. I, I can hear my own fear and my, you know, my loud worries and stuff. The more our soul is at, it, the more our soul is peaceful, balanced, and surrendered, kind of like your will, God, not mine the more this great good with capital G communicates itself to us. God communicates itself to us and to others through us. And that's why, you know, meditation, that's why mental prayer is the most important kind of prayer. Because even though like we both, well, especially Paul, but love, you know, vocal prayers and the prayers that the saints have written and all that. But sometimes just to be, whoops, Sorry. sometimes just the, um, to just be at peace and contemplating and just trying to listen to God. Um, and to you know or meditate on a little verse that we've just read or something and just allow god to talk you have something to say not at the moment okay I'm um at peace. you're at peace. good 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 <laughs> okay last my last little quote here is and then we'll just open it for a few minutes for for um comments questions or uh, insights that you guys have often we cause ourselves to become agitated and disturbed by trying to resolve everything by ourselves when it would be more efficacious to remain peacefully before the gaze of God and to allow him to act and work in us with his wisdom and power 
which are infinitely superior to ours. It's full of, it's full of stuff like that. You got to, you got to read this book. Okay. It's good. And I have to read it because it's been a long time since I read it. Um, so just, just, if anybody has anything to say, we still have like a few minutes, we'll go till 8.05 and it's 7.59 now. So if you have anything to say, comment, question, whatever, go for it. Well, I will share a few lines from this Jesus Always book because okay. what we've been talking about today, it just, it's just amazing how God works that this would be on October 5th. I want you to have no fear of bad news. The only way to accomplish this feat is to have a steadfast heart trusting in me. There is an abundance of bad news in the world, but you don't need to be afraid of it. Instead, confidently rely on me, believe in me, find encouragement in my sacrificial death on the cross and my miraculous resurrection. I, your living savior, am almighty God. I am sovereign over global events. I am still in control. So when things around you or in the world seem to be spinning out of control, come to me and pour out your heart. Instead of fretting and forming and fuming, put your energy into praying. Come to me, not only for comfort, but also for direction. I will help you find the way forward. Moreover, I take your prayers into account as I govern your planet in ways far, far beyond your understanding. So don't dread bad news or let it spook you. Instead, keep your heart steadfast and calm through confident trust in me. October 5th. Yay, perfect, beautiful. I'm gonna just put this okay. in one ear. So yeah, I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, no, I love that. That was absolutely perfect. Ah, oh, such good news, such good news. Thank you. You're welcome. What, oh, sorry, what's the name of that book? It's called Jesus Always. Oh, I don't think I know that one. Do you know that? No. Who's it by? It's uh, Sarah Young. Oh, nice. Oh, that might be the one that a, a friend of ours died in May. And I think, and they had in his, on his little funeral, he's younger than us actually, um, had a heart attack. And, and on the little card, the funeral card, there was a quote, and I'm pretty sure it was Sarah Young. So yeah, I yeah. think that's where I've heard of it before. I think she's have she has three of these. Uh, okay. Another one is called Jesus Calling. So Jesus Calling, Jesus Always. Jesus yeah. It, Where's my pen? Oh, good. Here, I'm going to write it down. See, this is great. I love, I love you guys. We, yeah, we all have to share with each other. This was Jesus Always, and the other one's Jesus Calling. Okay. And it's Sarah, Sarah Young? Sarah Young. Okay, thanks. And where, okay, who else? Oh, go ahead. So just one question. Where did you get the book, Searching for and Maintaining? Oh, this one, you can just get, you can get this one just, I'm pretty sure on Amazon. But I mean, uh, I think like a lot of bookstores, a lot of Catholic bookstores are going to have it. because St. Paul's, pub, the publisher St. Paul. Okay, yeah. But but yeah, if you walk into, I think, I think most Catholic bookstores would have it. Um, and I think it wouldn't be, you know, um, it, it wouldn't be very expensive because it's, it's little, it's narrow. Thank you. Well, this one says seven ninety five on the back. Oh, so. you're not supposed to say because it was wedding for <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> it might have been. Um, well, seven hundred ninety five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Jesus always and Jesus. What was the other one? Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus calling and calling. Okay, oh. got it. Thanks. I got it done now. Okay, good. And anybody else have a comment? Just on fear. Um, yeah. The martyrs that um, were like uh, St. Um, Thomas mm. more, mm -hmm. um, it's only by Jesus um, grace that we can become martyrs mm -hmm. to overcome fear. And uh, I read um, this one locution about St. Joan of Arc. She said, you think it was really bad when I was burned alive? She said, it was very joyous because I knew I was going to heaven mm -hmm. with Jesus, my King, you know? Wow. <laughs> so I think that's the same as fear, false evidence appearing real. Maybe it is real even, but if we focus on Jesus and on God, then our mind can only take one thing at a time. And that's why prayer is helpful. Thanks mm -hmm. for addressing the topic tonight. Mm. God bless I, that, you. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I forgot about that. I have heard it before, but the false evidence appearing real. 
and that along with um a, you know that comment that kathy read about you know i mean all of this is like god is holding all of us in his hands i mean the whole world right so i mean like yeah it's it, it doesn't make sense for us as well and well, I mean, it does on one level make sense that we're kind of going, what, what's going on? But, but it's um, because this is all new and different. But, um, but I think it's true when we when we calm down, and that's why it's important to have this mental prayer time and to just let ourselves rest in God's presence. Um, that is the solution. I mean, and the sacraments, the sacraments and and mental prayer. I think are. The main thing but but anyways um we are a little bit over it is 805 um so we will stop for today but if you want to get that book it would be we would highly recommend it as we have and uh anything else i can't think of anything okay yep. so and singing uh, singing is really, singing, singing is, is really good <laughs> singing is good yeah actually they say that that that's mm. actually, actually even if you're sick like with a, a respiratory illness like they said, it's good. Like it is good for our body to sing, right? It, it is really good. And souls. Yeah, yeah, it's good for good for our souls and our body. So um, maybe what we'll do is, how about if we'll have Paul um, pray a Hail Mary? We'll do the he'll do the first part. We'll do the second part. All right, sounds good. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. 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 Um, in the name of the Father, Son. and the Son, and the Holy, Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Okay, thanks, you guys. And it's really good to be with you. And God bless you, you with a wonderful week. Okay. God bless, God bless you with a wonderful week. Thank you all. Bye. God bless. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. You. You. Bye -bye. You're Bye -bye. very welcome. God Bye -bye. bless. Bye-bye. Take care now. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Thanks.